Hey everyone, like Amanda said, we're gonna get started with the core program. Um, I'm not sure how many of you guys today are utilizing the program, but this is an additional $50 along with your URG membership, but we will definitely show you the value in what you get there. Alrighty, so if you just bear with me for one moment. All right. So this is the UR, the URG sales support website that you're going to be using. This is where you will go. Oh my bad. This is where you are go to um, log in. As you can see, it's just urgsalesupport.com. Um, and that'll take you here. You will use your URG login and password and sign in. Um, I am in a staging mode right now just so that we can play with the system and we will use this test right here. In order to access the core program, um, again, I have more um, options over here, but you will go to the Predis Nano core report. Uh, let's see, where is it? disappeared on me here we go and as you can see you can search this report based off of a uh, vehicle year make and model you can do it based off of an interchange a VIN number a bulk VIN number a stock number a bulk stock number and a location range search for our self-service yards so I'm going to back up a little bit um, the way the Predis manual core report works is this is before you inventory the vehicle so if you're looking to grab all of the different part core parts on the vehicle before you inventory them, this is the, gonna be your main uh, place to do that. As you can see, you can do a price range if you only wanted to pull parts over maybe $5 or maybe maximum $200. Um, you also have the option to select your core buyers if you're used to working with just a select few and you only want to see those on there. Um, as you can see, we have 13 different core buyers, so we'll see th pricing for th 13 of those. Um, if you don't want to use all of them, like I said, you just uncheck them, but I have them all toggled for now. Uh, and you can also redo the order if you wanted to, as it says here, if you just wanted to see some of them first, some of them differently. Um, but we're going to start off by searching a year, make, and model just so you can see what this system looks like. Um, and as you can see, you can drop down, you can type. I'm just going to do this right here. I'm just going to do a 2009 Dodge, and we're going to do a 2500 and we're gonna just search for an engine. So you just hit this go button and then it'll load and once it loads, you'll see this screen right here. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of different options on here. You can see each core buyer in each column. So these are the different core buyers that are purchasing this part right now. Um, as you can see, a and Midwest, if you wanted to reach out to them, maybe before you sold them a part or you had some questions, you could click on their contact information and it would have all of it here. Um, you also see these little note tabs. All the little notebooks have different notes, like this one says, must be complete, rebuilders, cut, um, see websites for details, or um, maybe it just tells you some other information, like it has to be this certain engine. Um, you can see there's two different engines here for that certain Dodge, that just means that there could be two different potentials on this vehicle. Um, let's say that this one right here is the one that matches the one I have. Um, you can see the highest price is gonna be bolded. So if you wonder right over here why these are italicized, that's just because that's not the highest price being purchased for that vehicle part. So I'm gonna click that part, and if I wanted to create a load, I would just simply click Add to Load. Um, I will show you how to create a box name in a moment, but if I wanted to put this in a box, I'll just go ahead and do that. Uh, I'll put it in box two and click save. So we'll do another search here um, with an interchange. Uh, so just one second, I have them up on a different screen for me. Alrighty. All right, so this interchange right here, um, you can do any interchange you wanna search. I'm just gonna do one that I already have saved. And you would just click go. Again, it's gonna have the same view as the other one. Um, and then it'll have the AC compressor for this interchange code. It would usually have a description if there was one there. And then again, highest price in bold. 
So as you can see down here, the total number of selected core parts will usually, there you go. So it'll show up as one right here. It'll show you the value and it'll show you the total, total value of the ones I have. Um, so we'll go to, you can also do the VIN. Um, a VIN search will show up exactly the same as well as the stock number. Um, so like I said, you can definitely search all these different types if you wanted to do a bulk um, or if you just wanted to do a location for those cell service. So from here, we're going to do the inventory core report. Um, inventory core report is once the vehicle has been inventoried. Um, again, that is going to be um, what a lot of yards will use. Um, and that's going to show you uh, the different types you can do, again, is going to be the stock, the location, an age, a price, and a part type. As you can see, you have quite a bit more options on this screen, so you can do include all parts not inventoried. So maybe there's just some parts that you left out that you can toggle here and show those as well. And then you can also do, and then you can also do the part status, deleted parts, maybe those were gotten, gotten rid of, or you can do a grouping by vehicle, by location, um, and we'll do one of those right now. So I'm just gonna do a location search. Um, what this looks like is, let me type it in. And the reason a lot of people do these location range searches is if they're looking to crush a certain location on in their yard and they wanna see what core values are available, um, you can do this location range search and you can literally pull the, the parts off of that vehicle. Um, so from this location range I searched, these are the core parts on in that location. Um, you can, again, see all of the different core prices from the different buyers, what the total amount for this row would be. Um, we're gonna go ahead and create a core load um, so you can see what the process looks like. So I'm gonna do this KB course for the pri highest price for this engine assembly and this transmission. Um, we'll also add in this other transmission and this right here. So again, I'm gonna add it to my load. I'm gonna do a different box this time and just click save. Um, if you wanted to do an output, let's say you were sending your dismantler on this row and you wanted to give it to him so they know what to pull when they're out there, you can do an output. You can do um, all of the cores that are on this list or you can just do the selected cores. So again, that would look like this. You would hit print selected cores and then output report. And that will show you all of this view in a printed format. So next we're gonna do an age raid search. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this location so that we can see it here. Well, let's say you wanted to clean out your inventory and you wanted to get rid of everything that was under 365 days old. Maybe let's just clean out AC compressors. I'm gonna run this report. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of AC compressors that have been over a year old. So we just want to get rid of those right now. Um, so we're going to add those to a load as well. Perfect. So once you create those and add those to the load, we're going to go over to this core load build screen. And this is where those loads are going. So as you can see, it's core load box names is the first one. And as I mentioned, this is where you're going to go and create a box. So if I want to create a box number five, I just type that in and click that little green check box. And this is more of a housekeeping thing. They're like virtual boxes for you, just so you know what box you're putting the different parts in. So if you wanted to name that for the different core buyers, that's a great way to organize it as well. So then we're gonna go to this core load build. And as you can see, these are all of the different parts I have currently going for me. Um, it'll tell you how many parts you have and what the dollar amount is for each different core buyer that I put parts in for. I'm just going to click into this one, and again, it'll, it'll spell out kind of what the part type is, what that interchange, what the stock number is, and how much you're getting. Um, this is where you're going to go when you progress your load. So let's say that this ASMCI load was ready to go. I'm going to hit this progress and send load. And then, oh, sorry, I would just click this box one, progress and send load, and confirm. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go over here to this core load again in core load in progress. So as you can see, um, now I have that ASMC I box right here. Um, it tells me when I started it, when, it, when the progress was sent, how many parts were in it, 
what the total amount was and when it was picked up. This is gonna be something that you're gonna go in and, and type in. This is more, again, of a housekeeping item. You're gonna have to go in here and put this final value and the check number once you receive your payment. And when you click close load, that'll take you to another screen, which I will show you right now. As you can see, when we go over to this core load archive from that core load in progress, this is what it's gonna look like once you close out that load. So it'll tell you, and again, housekeeping, core, the core company I use, how many parts I sent them, what the price was, what I actually got for it, what I was deducted, and when it was picked up and closed, and then how long it took me to get paid. So for this certain instance, it's just for one company, but if you're using several different core buyers, this is a great way to figure out who you're gonna use in the long term, um, based off of how long it took you to get paid, maybe what your deductions were, um, again, this is really important when you're definitely trying to figure out who you're going to use in the long run. Um, so that is the majority of our core program. Um, we're going to open up for a Q&A just in case anybody has any questions for me. Um, you can type down at that bottom in the Q&A option, and we'll just give it a few minutes for some people to ask some questions. Doesn't look like we have any questions coming in right now, but if you do have one, please feel free to hit that Q&A at the bottom and ask some questions. So we got one question, how much does it cost? Our core program is gonna be $50 a month, um, and that is with the membership fee of $150. So if you're a member and you have that core program, that is gonna be $200 a month. Do we have any other questions? Correct, so that's gonna be a monthly fee. Um, we had somebody ask if it was $200 a month and the answer is yes for that. Alrighty, well it doesn't look like we have any further questions. For anybody else that needs to ask, um, please feel free to reach out to us at support at u-r-g.com, or you can give us a call on our main line at 303-367-4391. Again, that's 303-367-4391. Thank you guys for joining, and we look forward to seeing y'all next week.